everyone, and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're talking about how to use Punnett squares in a test cross. Now remember that Punnett squares are simply diagrams. They are diagrams that help us to predict the outcome, so the different possible gamete combinations that come in fertilization. Remember that gametes are just the cells that unite during fertilization. So in humans, this is a sperm cell and an egg cell. And they are carrying different combinations of alleles that each parent has to give away. Now there are three situations where Punnett squares are helpful. These are the monohybrid cross, where they're used to track the inheritance of alleles for one gene. The dihybrid cross, used to track the alleles for two genes, and then the test cross, which we're talking about today. If you're interested in learning more about the monohybrid cross and the dihybrid cross, see my other videos on those topics. Now, a test cross is useful because, as we learned about in the monohybrid and dihybrid cross videos, there are alleles which are dominant and alleles that are recessive but a dominant allele masks a recessive allele. That is the phenotype or physical appearance of the individual will be that of the dominant phenotype as long as they have at least one of those dominant alleles. So this leaves us with an interesting situation. Sometimes you can have an individual that is homozygous dominant for a character or heterozygous for a character. This means that they have two dominant alleles, or one dominant allele and one recessive allele. The problem here is that if they're homozygous dominant or heterozygous, they look the same. They have the same phenotype. A test cross is used to determine which genotype the individual is if they are one of these phenotypes. So let's look at an example. The method of a test cross is to cross the unknown individual, so the individual that is either homozygous dominant or heterozygous, to cross that individual with a homozygous recessive individual. And then you can use Punnett squares to look at the possible outcomes for offspring from these crosses. Now, the homozygous recessive individual, here we're using the classic example of Mendel's pea plant. In the pea plant that Gregor Mendel worked with, they could have purple flowers, which was the dominant characteristic, therefore um, abbreviated as a capital P, or they could have white flowers. The recessive allele was for white flowers, indicated by the lowercase p. So the homozygous recessive individual would be one with white flowers and two recessive alleles, so two lowercase p's. We will write them here. So since this individual is recessive for the white flowers, so two alleles for the recessive white flowers, the recessive allele is all that they have to give away to their offspring. This unknown individual, however, maybe they are homozygous dominant. That would be with two alleles for the dominant allele, so two purple flower alleles, or perhaps they are heterozygous, meaning that they would have one dominant allele and one allele. Now we can use Punnett squares to look at the possible outcomes for the offspring. If our unknown individual is homozygous dominant, then all of the offspring will get the dominant allele. And then of course they're going to get the recessive allele from the homozygous recessive parent. This means that the chance of the offspring being heterozygous is 100% because all offspring would get a dominant allele 
from one parent and a recessive allele from this homozygous recessive parent. So 100% heterozygous offspring. And 0% chance of any that are showing the recessive phenotype because none of them, none of these offspring are homozygous recessive. So all of these offspring would be purple if the unknown individual was homozygous dominant, meaning um, two purple flower alleles. Now, if the unknown individual is heterozygous, which is that other possibility, then it could give the dominant allele to 50% of the offspring and a recessive allele to 50% of the offspring. Of course, the homozygous recessive parent is still going to be giving away just the recessive allele. So in this case, we have 50% of our offspring being heterozygous. So 50% having purple flowers. And then we have 50% of our offspring being homozygous recessive. or having white flowers. So this is how a test cross is useful. If you have an unknown individual, purple flowers, but you don't know if it's homozygous dominant or heterozygous, you can cross it with a homozygous recessive individual and based on the offspring that you get. If you get 100% purple offspring, then you now know the genotype of your unknown individual. If you get 50% purple offspring and 50% white offspring, you also know the genotype of your unknown individual. So that's a test cross. If you are interested in learning about the other crosses, monohybrid cross or dihybrid cross, see my videos on those topics. Also, if you're interested in learning more in depth about the laws of Mendelian inheritance, so the law of independent assortment, the law of segregation, the law of dominance, you can also see my videos on those topics. But thanks for watching.